Hey everybody. It's been a while, but I wanted to jump back on this horse and uh, answer a couple of questions that I've been uh, posed on the website. One of the first ones I got asked um, was after the first Attitudes and Acting Beats tutorial came out and somebody wanted to know why is it that I use character sets. One of the main reasons is really organization. Um, it helps me uh, kind of keep track of the the set of controllers that I've chosen to use so it kind of helps me stay limited and uh, and it helps me keep track of what it is that I'm animating so if I just check it if I take a look at her I've got a set that's set up that's just called the girl all and literally all I did I just selected her control curves and if you uh, go into the character menu which is inside the animation module in Maya, um, I all you do is create a character set, and it gives you this dialog box up here, and that allows you to name this. Um, I'm just going to name this Josie All. I'm not going to save it because I already have it. You know, I would have named it Girl All, and um, I have selected all keyable except scale and visibility, and that gives me all of my transform nodes, all of my rotation nodes. And that's just everything. So I have it in there. Why couldn't I just set up a, a selector button up here? Why couldn't I just select a select all like I have on the rig and then just hit the S key? And I forget. <laughs> so it keeps me organized. So at least I know the whole thing is getting keyed. Now, you still have to hit S, but I don't have to select everything and hit S. I hit S, I key the whole thing, and then as I continue to pose on that frame, it's going to automatically key everything. Once I've started sort of set up all of my basic key poses, and of course this animation is finished, so I've got a lot of information in there. But then I start breaking down into the pieces of the body. The first thing that I want to get cohesive is the torso, the core of the body, from the heels up to the top of the head, excluding the arms. I just want to get that, that core body movement going. I'll set up a character set just called Torso. So all you really have to do is if you have your character set selected, which I do here, um, you can go through and specifically select a set of controllers that you want as a sub character set. So I'm going to say I want the core, I want the hips, I want these FK chest controllers, I want the neck and let's say I want the head. Um, so I'm gonna say that is what I'm considering my torso chain. And with, with the girl all character set selected, I'd go into create character subset, and I would call this torso, and I, again, all keyable except scale and visibility, and I would hit create character subset. Why couldn't I just create another character set? Why should it be a subset? Well, I like it that it's still things that are included in the main set. If I want to step back and I want to continue to make full body keys, like let's say I'm, um, you know, I, 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 let's say I get a change or a director wants me to add, you know, a, a few extra beats or take out some of the blocking that I did and I need to go back and I need to re-block. At least I know that 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 torso set that I created is inside the all set. So so to me I've got this hierarchy built. Then if I want to start cleaning up the arms, I can create, like I did here, a subset of um arms, you know, of arm curves. And that that way if I want to start adding extra breakdowns to create maybe some exaggerated drag, or if I want to just grab a chunk of this and offset it, move it down the timeline, um, I can do so and start offsetting my timing and creating, you know, kind of loosening up the body a little bit. That um, is another reason to just have this isolated set of, of controllers that I can feel confident of just hitting the S key and only keying those things and creating breakdowns on, on those and creating offsets on those and slow ins and easing my slow ins and slow outs. The other part of it is the face and lip sync. Um, I have a face subset, as you see here, um, that 
also has its own subset of just the mouth curves. So the reasons for that are relatively obvious. If I pull up just the face curves, I can go through here and decide all, you know, I've placed pretty, um, pretty solid facial expressions in my blocking, but some of them may hang a little bit longer. I may like to create some sort of little overlapping action between the face and the body and allow my eyes to stick on something a little longer or my face to hang on an expression for five, six frames longer before it quickly snaps over to follow the next pose change. So I can just be inside of this curve set, even on the curve editor and start manipulating the, the slow ins and the slow outs. Here, here's another reason why I like them. If you use something like Tween Machine, this is a great little plugin that Justin Barrett made years ago and a lot of people are still using. I can use this to import all of my character sets. Uh, I happen to be in the face right now, so it's not importing everything. You, know, you gotta be back in that, the top higher part of the hierarchy, then you get all your sub, sub character sets. And in the face, to me, this is really important because expressions change before movements a lot, they change, they change afterwards as spontaneous afterthoughts. Um, it's really nice to adjust the flow of um, expression changes and the timing of, of all of that. Um, the last part of this is, of course, because of lip sync. If I just have a character set of just the mouth curves, um, this right here is, I can just look at my lip sync. Love this because not only if I scrub through, I mean, look at how it sort of matches the, the, the sound wave down in the thing. I can kind of look and see that I'm creating the right dynamic, you know, just by looking at it. But, um, I can, I can set breakdown keys for, um, for words without, you know, just by hitting the S key. I and mean, I can see it just in this really efficient little window right here. And if I want to manipulate certain slow ins and slow outs, if I want to say, well, this is okay, but you know, right here, I want this to, to start to, I don't want this to close quite so much right away. I want to take everything in the mouth and I want to ease it back. Uh, it's great. And there we go. And I've got I can really sculpt without having to select individual things and worry about where they are in the graph editor. At least that's, it feels that way to me. It feels confusing like that to me. I think it helps in blocking to stay organized with your full body keys. It helps in splining to start playing around with your offsets where you could just take an entire character set and offset it by a couple of frames and see what it looks like. And then be inside that arm, be inside that leg and have less spaghetti to climb around in. Then as you're doing lip sync and you're doing polishing, you know, you can really focus on just the mouth and, and really get the timing of the phonemes and, and the different emotional shapes that you want working well inside of a small, easy to manage set. That's why I use character sets. Um, I know there's probably lots of arguments why you couldn't, but it just fits my brain flow and, and, and I highly recommend it. It, it really um, you know, allows you to separate the, the body in what I think are sort of its natural separations um, and help keep your workflow kind of plugging along without getting lost in your own uh, Bezier curve spaghetti. So, um, and it works really great with tweening tools too. So, and tweening tools are great. So keep those questions coming. I, I'm, I'm curious to know what else people want to hear about. Happy to do it. It's fun. All right. See you.